welcome back to my channel. My name is Katie. So today's video is going to be a full face testing Kiko. Well, full face for the most part. The only thing I haven't got is eyebrow products or a concealer, but everything else I have. I did a full face testing Kiko about a year and a half ago, so I obviously have tried some Kiko products, but I wanted to try some more. And um, I brought a lot, spent a lot of money, may have been over £100, not gonna lie. But let's just get straight into it. So I'm going to start my eyes. I've already done a little bit of eyeshadow, as you can see. I didn't buy a palette or anything, but what I did buy is I bought four of the Glitter Shower eyeshadows, which are these here. Uh, the reason I bought these is because when I did do that previous Kiko video, I already tried one of these, but I just tried one. It was this one here. Um, this is 02. This is like the rose gold one. And I was honestly so impressed with the pigmentation of this. It's actually insane. So I was like, next time I do a Kiko order, I'm going to buy all of the other shades, which is what I ended up doing. I think there was one shade that I didn't buy. I think it was like a sort of like dark metal-y sort of colour, which I, I don't know, I just didn't think I'd get a lot of use out of that shade, so I've got number one, which is a silvery one. So yeah, this is number one, it's a silver shade. Looks like this, and that's what that one looks like. Very pigmented, very pretty. Uh, so I've got number four, which is a gold one, which looks like this, and that's what that one looks like. Very nice. Then I've got zero 05, which is green. So that one that looks like that. Okay, so what's weird is when you swatch that one, like the glitter picks up on your finger, but then when you swipe it, it just sort of goes like a mat, which is a bit strange. I'm not quite sure what that's all about. I think maybe it might be best applied with a brush or something, because it does pick up on the glitter on your finger, just not when you swipe it. And then I've got 03, which is like a purpley pinky shade. It looks like this. Yeah, that one's actually swatched pretty nicely. Yeah, that looks really nice. They've all swatched nicely, except the green one, really. That one I'm a bit confused about. Overall, I don't feel like any of them have swatched as nicely as the original rose gold one I have. Like, I don't know. I don't know if the formula's different with these or whatever, but the rose gold one is just, like, on another level. It's pigmented, and, like, the swatch, it just goes on and on and on. <laughs> and these ones are, like, nice, but... Uh, I don't know, I just don't feel like they're as good as that one. Obviously, I'm probably not going to be able to use all four of these. Thinking I may be using the pink one, like, more in the outer third. Um, maybe the gold and silver in the middle? I don't know. One of them is going to have to not be used anyway. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do a cut crease. I'm just using a Rimmel concealer, because as I said, I didn't get a concealer from Kiko. There just wasn't anything that appealed to me on there. And I have tried their skin tone concealer before, um, and I didn't really like it that much. So I'm just going to do a cut crease, I'll probably just do one eye at a time. Okay, so I'm going to use, so I'm going to use 03, the pinky one, and put that in the outer third. I'm using brushes for the moment, we'll see how they work with brushes. Yeah, that's worked really nicely. Very pigmented. I'm gonna use the gold shade, which is 04, and put that in the center. That's really pretty. I do think that one applied a bit better with a finger, but wow, pigment. <laughs> then I'm gonna use 01, the silver, in the inner corner. I think the silver one might be my favorite. I think it's the most pigmented. I could see me using that silver like all over for like a glam look and it being really nice. So obviously I didn't get to use the green one but that is all of the shimmers applied and I have to say I think on the eyes they work really well. I'm very impressed with the pigmentation. They applied well. Um, I feel like you can apply them all with the brush. I did feel like the gold one kind of needed a mix of a finger and a brush but the other two I feel like applied well with a brush. I'm just going to go ahead and do the other eye off camera. And then we'll be back to try more products. So I've got a liquid and a pencil eyeliner. So I've got the Intense Colour Long Lasting Eyeliner in 16, which is the black one. It is just a coal eyeliner pencil and it has a smudgy thing on one end. That's probably what you use today because I want to put it in the waterline. Yeah, it's just a standard black coal. I'm just going to pop this in my top and bottom waterlines. And yeah, that's pretty pigmented. Texture's quite nice, it doesn't feel uncomfortable to apply. Uh, so I'll just have to see how long it lasts, but so far that's a pretty good curl eyeliner. Next I've got the Ultimate Pen Longwear Eyeliner 01. So this is a liquid eyeliner. 
it's just a felt tip and it's got this sort of nib. I don't have a lot of liquid liners at the moment so I thought I'd pick one up and this one did have good reviews. Um, I can't guarantee that this is going to be a nice wing but I'm going to attempt it. they're not even but I feel like the more I fuck all this the more it's gonna get fucked so I feel like maybe there was a bit of trouble with how that applied over the glitter because I could see it kind of just getting like all embedded with each other I feel like that work eyeliner would probably work a lot better over just non glittery eyeshadows like I'm sure it'll be fine with like normal shimmers but these shimmers are like very glittery I mean it's in the name they're called glitter shower eyeshadows but other than that, I feel like the pigment's good, um, it's fairly easy to use, so yeah, I'll need to try that with either no eyeshadow or, or less glittery eyeshadow, but I mean, it seems like it's a decent eyeliner pen. Okay, so I actually bought two mascaras, so I've got the Unmeasurable Length Mascara, which comes in packaging like this, and it's got this quite interesting shaped wand. The Kiko Mascara that I tried um, last year, I didn't like that much. So I'm hoping that these two are going to be a bit better. Um, the other one that I got is from the Tuscan Sunshine collection, and this is the free one mascara. I did get a few bits from the Tuscan Sunshine thing, because Kiko tends to come out with a lot of these like limited edition ranges. So, I mean, I'm assuming this is a sort of like a summery thing, so it probably will be around for a little bit longer. That is one of the annoying things about Kiko, that they do kind of have all of these limited edition ranges. But yeah, this is a double-ended mascara. One of the ones looks like that and one of them looks like that, a bit more hourglass. I think I'll just do one on one eye, one on the other, so I can test both of them. So I'm going to start with the unmeasurable mascara and I'll put this on my top lashes on this side. I do feel like when you have thick eyeliner on it does kind of detract from mascara a bit. Uh, I do feel like it has given length, I think the name is kind of accurate but I feel like it's not the best for volume, I would like a bit more like drama than what this mascara has given. It's done a bit of something and I'll have to see what it looks like without like a heavy eyeliner on under it but so far I think, I mean again if length is what you're after I think it does lengthen but I just don't think it's the most volumizing. Personally volume is my like favourite part of a mascara. I've got a better feeling about this one. Uh, I'm not side, I'm not sure which side you're supposed to use first. Apparently one side's got volume and the other side has got the lengthening and curling effect. I feel like I'm just going to start with the uh, volume side because it doesn't actually say. Yeah, I'm going to start with the one that's got this wand in it and then I'll use the other side. I can already tell but this one's probably going to be a bit better. I mean, I feel like just on its own, that side did more than the other one did. So I'm going to use the other side now and layer that. So that's this eye. I feel like maybe it's got a tiny bit clumpy, but overall I feel like that's definitely a lot more dramatic than the other eye. A lot more thickness, a lot more volume. If that, again, I'll have to see what it looks like without heavy eyeliner on under it, but... So far, I actually think I'm quite liking this one, the Tuscan Sunshine 3-in-1 mascara, but the unmeasurable length one, I'm not so sure about at the moment. I will keep using them both, and we'll see. Okay, so moving on to base now. So the foundation I got is the Unlimited Foundation, which is one of their permanent ones. The foundation I tried last year was the, uh, the full, I think it was called the 2-in-1 concealer and foundation, something like that. Um, and I did quite like that one, it's not like an all time favourite foundation, but I think it is decent. So they had quite a lot of foundations on there, and I was just like looking for the reviews and I felt like this one sort of suited my preferences the most. A lot of them did seem like they were more sort of oily, hydrating sort of foundations. This one, from the reviews, it was, seemed like it was more of a semi-matte sort of foundation. So that is what it looks like. It's in the shade WR01, which I'm pretty sure is the lighter shade. The Kiko shade range is okay, but it could be better, but it's not bad. I feel like there was about 20 shades or so. I do feel like it looks like it is going to be a little bit dark for me. But I'm just going to use it on its own for the sake of it. But I probably would use it with a white mixer in the future. So I'm just going to go ahead and apply this to my whole face. I 
I'd definitely say this is actually more of a matte foundation. I feel like it looks pretty matte on the skin. The colour is definitely a bit dark for me. I would put a bit of white mixer in with this in the future. Um, but overall I'm actually quite liking how it's looking. I think it looks like pretty decent. I've not got any major issues with it other than the colour being a bit dark. It's not the most pore blaring foundation, but I wouldn't say it's like super emphasising my pores either. And I know I said it's matte, but there is still like a little bit of radiance coming through, like kind of on my cheekbones I can see a bit of radiance, so it's not completely like a flat, like dry looking matte, if you get what I mean. It's not like dry at all really, but it does have more of a matte appearance than like a dewy oily appearance. The coverage I would say is probably just like a solid medium coverage, it's not like completely wiped out my blemishes or anything, but it's done like a pretty good job with them. So I would just say that this is like a medium coverage foundation, which is fine. Overall, I mean, I feel like it looks pretty good. I've not got any major complaints about it. I like it, I'll have to test out the wear obviously. I mean obviously I will be doing an updated review in all of these products so I will talk about wear and everything else about this foundation at some point on my channel. Um, but so far it's actually really not a bad foundation. So as I said I didn't get a concealer from Kiko so I'm going to use a little bit of my e.l.f. concealer under my eyes and then my Too Faced one just around my blemishes on my nose. So for setting powder, I got another Tuscan Sunshine product. Uh, this is the Perfecting Powder. They do seem to bring out a similar sort of looking powder with like most of their limited edition ranges I've noticed. So even when this Tuscan Sunshine range disappears, they'll probably bring out a similar powder in their new range. The packaging is absolutely stunning. I love it. And the powder is just like a white translucent powder and it's got like a little floral engraving. I'm a bit concerned about this because uh, when I swatched it before, I'll swatch it again. It's like nothing comes off it, so I, I'm i just a bit concerned that this is not gonna like mattify me properly, but we'll give it a go. I'm swiping my brush in it, and a little bit of fallout is coming off. So I'm just gonna try and set my old face with this, and we'll see if it actually mattifies me. Mattified. It has worked, um, but it was a lot of swiping. My flower pattern has <laughs> disintegrated. Um, I do feel like maybe it does oxidise a little bit as well. I noticed when I was applying it under the eyes that obviously the e.l.f. concealer was quite brightening and then it just sort of kind of went a bit like darker or orangey. So I do think maybe it's an oxidising powder. I don't know. Hmm. And the finish is like, I don't know, it doesn't look the best. It's a bit... It's just very powdery looking. Yeah, I'm not obsessed with that powder, but I'll keep I'll keep trying it. So far, I, I don't love the finish, and I feel like it oxidizes a bit as well, so... I'm not obsessed with that, and also you have to vigorously swipe your brush in that like a million times to get the payoff. Okay, so moving on to cheap products, I brought quite a lot. So I've got a face palette, and then I brought a bronzer and a blush. So the face palette is just called the Tuscan Sunshine Face Palette. What the packaging looks like, again, I'm really loving this peachy orange thing with all the flower engravings, and that's what it looks like. So, so for my skin tone, I feel like I should just about be able to get away with this for a highlighter. It might be a bit dark. Um, this I think I could probably use as either a bronzer or a contour. Uh, I could use that as a blush or a blush topper. Uh, not sure, sure what I'd do with this shade, maybe I could put a bit of it over my bronzer, I'm not sure. Um, so I also got the Tuscan Sunshine Radiant bronzer. Uh, it comes in two shades and I got 01 Sweet Honey. Again, same sort of packaging. And that's what the colour looks like. It has got a more sort of like kind of caramelly tone, which I personally quite like in bronzers. So hopefully this isn't too dark for me and it will work for my skin tone. And then I also got the Silicon Notes Baked Blush and 03 Pan Panaria Mauve. Mauve? Mauve? Mauve. And that's what the shade of that one looks like. Really pretty. So I'm going to start by using the Radiant Bronzer. I'm going to whack that for my cheeks and my forehead and hopefully the shade works. Oh my god, it smells so nice. Uh, I love products that smell nice. It does have quite a lot of pigment, um, so hopefully it doesn't come out too harsh. I think that worked reasonably well. Again, I do feel like maybe that setting powder, it may 
interfere with a cheap product. I do find that sometimes chances and powders do that. But I mean, it still showed up anyway. Yeah, I think that's quite nice. Um, I'll need to try it with a foundation that matches me and stuff, so we'll see. But I think the formula is okay. I'm gonna try a bit of this baked blush and I'm just gonna pop that on my cheeks. Wow, it's uh, presented. Let's do some tapping. This also smells amazing. Um, yeah, it was quite pigmented, so I'd say it's steady hand there, but overall, that actually looks pretty nice. Let me blend it a little bit. Yeah, I think that works. I'm gonna use a bit of uh, Golden View in this palette. And just put a bit of that over the top of my bronzer. I'm not quite sure what that did, to be honest. I guess it's made me a bit more bronzy. And I'll use Sunrise, the pink at the bottom and add a bit of that over the top of my blush. Yeah, I can see that that's given it a bit more shimmer. Yeah, that works quite nicely. Okay, so I'm really hoping that this will be light enough to be a highlight for me. Uh, that one's called Geoconda. It swatched really nicely, so I'm hoping that this works on my skin tone. I'll be really disappointed if it doesn't because the swatch was so nice. Yeah, I do think it is probably a little bit too dark for me, but it is really pretty. So it's it's an eyeshadow, I guess. So obviously we've got this shade in here. I'm not sure about the tone of it, to be honest. It's a bit, it's a bit reddish looking. This might be an absolutely terrible idea, but I might use it to contour my nose. Uh, this probably won't work. Uh, let's give it a go, though. Yeah, it's definitely way more like reddish toned. I mean, again, it could be used as an eyeshadow, I guess. This probably isn't going to work. Why am I doing this? I mean, it sort of worked. <laughs> yeah, I think, the br I think the bronzer and the blush are really nice, but I'm not sure about the face palette. I'm not sure if it complements my skin tone the best. So as I said, I don't have any eyebrow products, so I'm just going to finish off my eyes, do my eyebrows off camera, and then I've got some lip products to use. Okay, so the last things we've got to try, I've got two shades of the Velvet Passion matte lipsticks. I think these are permanent ones. So the names of the shades aren't written on here, just the number. So there's a uh, 332 and um, 327. I think one was called like Taupe Nude, and one was called like Warm Nude or something like that. I don't know. So I've got this shade here again, which is like quite a pinky nude. And I've got this shade here, which is more of like a cool tone, sort of brownie, kind of like a Max Stone sort of shade. I think I'll use the lighter nude first, just because that will be easier to remove. But I love matte bullet lips, so hopefully these have a nice formula. Oh god, they smell like vanilla. They smell exactly like matte lipsticks. So this could be a dupe. That's what it looks like. I'm not sure I love the way it's sitting on the lips. It kind of looks a bit like patchy almost. I mean, let me zoom in. I feel like on the bottom part. I don't know. I just feel like it looks a bit like patchy. Because it doesn't feel super matte as well. It's like quite, there's quite a bit of moisture there. I'm not so sure about that. And I don't know, I feel like the shade is maybe a little bit too pinky for me as well. But I'll wipe it off and I'll try the darker one. Okay, so we'll try out the darker shade now. See if the formula's any different. I feel like that one looks less patchy. It's not that, yeah, I wouldn't say it's like the most pigmented though. Like it took a lot of building to get like full opaqueness. And again, it feels a bit like, it doesn't feel completely matte. It feels like more moisturizing. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like I'm a little bit underwhelmed with those lipsticks. I mean, they're called matte velvet mattes, I think. Yeah, velvet passion matte lipsticks. I was expecting it to be like a nice matte bullet lipstick. So I don't know. I feel the color of this is actually really nice. I mean, it's a bit deeper than what I normally go for, but I think it all complements each other quite well. Okay, so I think that is everything done and tried uh still not fixed my hair yet the products that i need just don't want to arrive for some reason so i'm gonna be a bit uh, orangey for a little while longer this is my finished full face testing kiko so definitely a mixed experience here so i feel like the products that i liked um Definitely these glitter eyeshadows. I think that they're absolutely stunning. I quite liked the liquid liner and the pencil eyeliner. 
I thought the uh, Tuscan Sunshine Mascara, the 3 in 1 one, was pretty good, but I'm not so sure about the unmeasurable one. I quite liked the foundation. Didn't really like the setting powder that much. I liked the single bronzer and the single blush, but I think the face palette. I don't think it works the best for my skin tone. And the lipsticks, I don't know, I was just hoping they'd be a bit more matte. And again, I think the lighter pink one, it looked a bit, like, it just didn't complement my lips very well. It kind of just went a bit patchy, streaky looking. So yeah, I'm not I'm not mad about the matte bullet lips because they're not really matte, to be honest, and I prefer a matte lip. Overall, I do think there were some pretty good products here. Um, so I'm gonna keep using these over the next few months and I will talk about them again in an updated makeup review. But that's my thoughts on them for now. So um, I will see you in my next video. Goodbye.